Hey everyone, looking at an old one today, all the way back from the dark days of 2004, Sid Meier's Pirates. This is quite a deviation from the usual fare produced with Sid Meier's name on it, and Pirates itself is a remake of a game by the same name from 1987. The setup is simple. Your family, back in an undisclosed European country, gets kidnapped by the evil Marquis de Lamontban. You can tell he's evil, as he has a skull and crossbones on his eye patch, and then he runs off with him into the Caribbean because the family wasn't dead to him. You, a baby-faced young man, must sign with one of the four countries involved in the Caribbean, the Dutch, the Spanish, the French, or the English, and travel to the Caribbean to save your family. After months of rough voyage across the Atlantic, being passed around sailor to sailor, Mr. Babyface mutinies with some of his crew and takes over the ship and the game begins. You start in a small maneuverable ship and are given a mark by the country you originally signed up with, despite being a mutineer, and are told to go about sinking and boarding enemy vessels and raiding their cities. It's also worth noting you change the start date of the game, which changes what ships are available and the balance of the factions. The starting ship is capable of pretty much anything, and really there isn't much it can't do, and it comes down to personal choice if you want to have a big war galleon or a nimble little sloop. The larger ships are slower, have more cannons and crew, but the smaller ships are more maneuverable and can outsail many of the broadsides put in by the larger ships, whittling down their crew and sailed before boarding and fighting the weakened crew. Just don't get a full broadside put into you. This part of the game is essentially sailing around and trying to get into the best position, before launching a broadside at the opposing ship while trying to avoid being caught against the wind, which slows you down and makes you turn like a brick. I ended up selling my flag galleon and capturing a brig of war, because I'd begun to get bored of the time it took to sail into the wind, and some of the ship-to-ship -ship fights ended up being really slow, either because I'm slowly trying to catch my target, or it's two massive ships slowly circling each other. After sinking a few enemy vessels, one of the nations will promote you, and you will be one of the governor's daughters. These ladies come in three varieties, plain, attractive, and beautiful. Hey, this is 2004 we're talking about. This was normal back then. The ladies provide information, gifts, and eventually marriage. However, you can court as many of the ladies as you like and can milk them all for gifts and information. The only downside to this mechanic is the dancing. Oh, the bloody dancing. Dancing is a quick time-driven event, and each lady dances at a different pace with a different moveset in which to dance depending on how attractive they are, with the most beautiful daughters having a much more rapid and varied dance pattern. 2004, just remember, 2004, okay? So the plain daughter dances nice and slow and gives you plenty of time to react to her gestures, and the beautiful daughter is like dancing with someone on a thousand cans of Red Bull. If you're all about the beautiful daughters, then it's worth practicing on the plain and attractive daughters before working your way up to the beautiful ones just like how dating were back in 2004. I prefer the beautiful French daughters, but enough about my disgusting deviances. Once in a while, one of the daughters or a barkeep will tell you that the evil Baron Raimondo, who knows where your family members are, is in a certain area and you need to go and interrogate him for information. The evil Baron Raimondo, and you can tell he's evil because it says as much in the name tag over a ship, will be floating around in a Spanish war galleon. You climb aboard, have a scrap, Another quick time driven event, but actually a fun one, and once you make him yield he gives you a map, or part of one at least, and says that your family member can be found in that general location. The melee system used for Raimondo and the Marquis is exactly the same for all melee encounters, and is a quick time driven dodge attack system, where the enemy telegraphs where he is going to swing and you counter with the appropriate dodge. Then, as he's recovering from his cartoonishly over exaggerated failure, you then make your attack. If you miss an attack, then you will have an equally cartoonish reaction, and you will have to struggle to react to the shot the enemy character is going to put in next. QTEs are usually lambasted for being badly implemented and boring as piss, but actually in Pyrus they are relatively well done, even the dancing which I personally dislike. You can keep a ship, which is one of the most upgraded powerful ships you can get, and then sail off. Once you have enough pieces of the map to work out where your family member is, you can find them using the treasure hunting mechanic and finding the big red X near some landmarks on the treasure map. It's not as dull as it sounds, but it's not an exactly exciting mechanic in itself. After freeing your family member, they will tell you that the Marquis is in a location and you need to fight him. He is much like Raimondo, but tougher, in a nastier ship, and fights a damn sight quicker than Raimondo does. Once defeated, he then provides a map piece, which tells you where his hideout is. This is where one of my first criticisms arise. This is how you progress the story. Periodically you're told that Baron Ray... We're just going to call him Ray from here on out. You're told that Ray is floating around near some random city. You go that way and then speak to the barkeeps who may say, Oh yeah, he was totally here, but now he's over there. And you sail off again to the new location. 
You find him, you fight him, you get the map and a ship, you find your family member, the Marquis then spawns, you get a bit of a map for the Marquis hideout, and then you're told that Ray is hanging about. You go, you find him, you fight him, he tells you what one of your family members is, and if you can work out from all the parts of the map you have where they are, you find them, then the Marquis spawns, you fight him, and then you get a map for his hideout. Then you're told that Ray is hanging about, you find him, you fight him, okay, okay, you get the point. The game is very, very repetitive. The good news is that there is plenty to do that isn't following the story, which is what I end up doing more often than not. Sailing around, beating up the Spanish, getting promoted and dancing with daughters. Then there's the notorious historical pirates. They float about in various types of ships, and you fight them and you knock them off the leaderboard. They each have a unique stylized representation of the historical character in question, which is great, and it's always enjoyable to see how the famous pirate has been portrayed. Unfortunately, despite the work put into the characters, the cutscenes of them being defeated in melee is always the same for all ten of them, which is regrettable as it's fun once and then immediately loses all satisfaction as you see the same cutscene play out for Blackbeard that did for Jack Rackham. Pyro's art style holds up to time for the most part, despite the fact the game is now 13 years old, it's still delightful to behold. The models are full of flavour and character, exaggerated and fun, and the choice of colour palette in general for the game is bright and engaging. It's nice to have a game use a bright colour palette and an exaggerated, almost cartoony aesthetic to break away from realistic or gritty games that are the fashion at the moment. The facial expressions of the characters in the game are pure untarnished gold, especially when you upset the governors or their daughters. The actual gameplay is much like a kid's movie. Everyone has metal weapons but never causes any bleeding or clothing to get ruffled, and no one ever seems to die. At best they'll get knocked overboard and disappear beneath the waves. Another minor bugbear is that while you have a choice of playing alongside the Dutch, English, French or Spanish, Ray and the Marquis are both tied to the Spanish faction, which means that playing alongside the Spanish can be a bit tricky if you're trying to follow the storyline. Most of the games I play, I usually end up solely beating up the Spanish due to this, and the fact that they are the most prevalent faction in the game for the most starting dates presenting the most targets to plunder. The game also has a separate system for city raids, and sets up a turn-based strategy style minigame. This usually requires at least 200 or so pirates, which means that you either require a large ship or a fleet of smaller vessels. The most defended cities have over 1,000 defenders, which would require the player to amass a huge fleet, or to try and get pirates and Indians to raid the city beforehand to weaken the city's defenses. The game calls them Indians, by the way. I'm just using the naming standards as the game does. The system itself is fun enough, with various modifiers for positioning, such as attacking from the flank or being in a higher position. Once the town's garrison is defeated, you will loot a good amount of gold from the town and then head back to sea. If the garrison is sufficiently weak before you launch your raid, you can install a different country's noble as the new governor, changing the town's allegiance. The problem with having a lot of pirates under your control is that they eventually start to get miserable with being at sea, and we want you to dock and give them a portion of the booty. If you choose to divide the plunder, some time passes and all ships that aren't your main ship are removed and you start with a small contingent of pirates and start over. After a while of doing this, your character grows older and his health begins to fail. This can be a bit frustrating if you're trying to complete the main quest, but ultimately, its effects are limited to making your character a bit slower and less effective in melee combat. Eventually, you can retire from pirating, which ends the game. When you split the booty, you can also auto increase your captaincy rank, which effectively changes how much of a cut you take when you divide the plunder, but also removes some of the crutches in the game, be it the flashing icons telling you where the enemy is going to attack, or the speed of which you are expected to react. It also changes how the wind works, although honestly, that doesn't make it any more difficult, because regardless of which way the wind is blowing, you have to react in the same manner. All in all, this is a solid game, a lot of fun, and is fairly replayable, and still holds up very well today. There is also a very basic trading mechanic where you find the price in one city and the price in another, buying low and selling high. It isn't really worth much more than this footnote, as it's really not worth exploring in the game itself because you're a bloody pirate, not a trader. Sid Meier's Pirates is a nice mix of innocent swashbuckling adventure with some fun mechanics that are not overly complicated and yet not so simple as to be cheap and nasty. The main character is somewhat of an unlikable baby face, but I think that's personal preference more than anything else. As you can probably tell from the video, it's also fixed to 4x3, and trying to actually get it to adjust to 16x9 proves to be very difficult, and ultimately it results in having to access any files and trying to change things not through the game. There doesn't seem to be a player-driven patch, although I've not looked for it that closely. It's currently 9.99 US dollars or 5.99 British pounds on Steam. I hope you've enjoyed this look back at an old game, which I still think is worth a shot today. If you like what I do, then please let me know using the like button, and if you want to hear more from me, then please subscribe. 
Anyway, this is me signing off, and I hope to see you next time.